Hello class, hello YouTube. I'm Trader Rick from Swing Trade from Scratch with my weekly outlook and recap video. In these videos, I break down my favorite stocks from a swing trading perspective to illustrate to you how operating a swing trading business works. And the purpose is really for you to learn from this. So it's education in these videos. I want you to be able to see what it takes to run a swing trading business. I want to inspire some new ideas for trades and I want you to see the strategies that I rely on and teach so that you can become a better trader. So we've got 10 names up on the board today. We're going to talk about what to expect in the week ahead. Let's get into it. Let us begin with the outlook. So we're going to focus on two new names that are event driven plays that seek to capture positive catalysts for longs in this more stable market that we've grown accustomed to these last couple of weeks. Um, this market I do expect to cool off a little bit this week and that's why I'm focused more so on specific event driven plays. So first up is MSOS. This is a US based cannabis ETF. So you might have noticed some of the marijuana names starting to pop and run a little bit last week. And the event coming up this week is the MORE Act, which stands for Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement Act. And if this gets passed through Congress this week, it would remove marijuana from the list of federally controlled substances. So obviously that would be a positive catalyst for these stocks. So MSOS is the way that I'm looking to play this. If you remember back from last year, it was something that I was looking at for a long, but it really cooled off with the rest of the market uh, lately. So we see a bottom here at 1767, and we see a better support here at 1960. I think anything above $20 should be considered bullish on MSOS, and that's how I'm reading it. I'm looking myself for an entry between... 2030 and 21 to go long and then I would have a tight stop at 1960 I could see a more aggressive stop at 1764 and then you can see my price targets at 23 25 50 and 27 so I expect some initial pop on the positive news provided that the bill is passed if not then if I'm already in the trade I'd immediately exit Regardless of that stop loss, it just get out if it ends up failing. But it seems like it's got a lot of positive momentum and should pass through Congress this week. So I look for an initial spike up to around 23 and higher over the course of the year. And then our second stock to play this week is BKKT, Backed Holdings. This is a cryptocurrency blockchain company. You probably noticed that Bitcoin and Ethereum and some of the other cryptos have started to make a pretty good comeback. All above um, Bitcoin, back above 40,000. And some analysts are saying it looks to be headed back towards 50. It's kind of been trading in a range for quite some time now. And it's even been less volatile than a lot of the names in the NASDAQ, uh, which is something new. So if crypto starts to run again, which it looks like it's going to, and you don't want to trade within the crypto space, you can play this stock, which is how I'm going to do it. Uh, BKKT, see a lot of upside potential here. I'm looking for entry above 660. So anywhere from 660 to seven, I'd like to enter as long as the cryptos remain strong. And then you've got the stop down here at the low of 331. And then I plan on uh, an aggressive price target at 1837 over time. But I will be taking profit along the way. And for instance, at 864 would be the first level that I'd look to take profit at and then see that level become a support as it runs back up towards 1830s. So that's the play there. WD Walker and Dunlop I mentioned last week. Expecting this company to fall over the course of the year with the higher interest rate hike. And there was a lot of Fed speak this week indicating that a 50 basis point uh, rate hike is pretty much likely at the May meeting and possible 
over the course of the rest of the meetings throughout the year. And the markets seem to digest this news pretty favorably. So we're kind of touching on, on some of the recap here. Walker and Dunlop look to move sideways for most of the week. I'm looking for a spike up to 139 or even higher to 145 to go short and then play it down to these lower levels. But it didn't quite set up this week. We'll see what happens next week. So this is still on watch. And then the next three names, WLL, Whiting Petroleum. Price of oil went up this week again. So this isn't something that I want to enter short on just yet. Really, I'd be looking for, with all of these names, LMT, the defense stock, and IPI, the mining stock. You see that one making new highs. All three of those stocks moving higher this week as the war continued. Based on what I heard and observed this week, it seems like the war is going to last longer than I was initially anticipating. And maybe I'm dumb for anticipating a quick ending to things, but... It doesn't really matter. What really does matter is when the war does end, I want to be ready to take advantage. And as you know from the last few videos and emails, these three names are how I'm looking to do so. So if we do get an announcement of peace talks, successful peace talks, a peace agreement, that's when I would look to go short on these names at those various levels. So these are now the positions that I've had open. Fiserv was a fintech play on a potential hot sector after Block reported really strong earnings and the market digested them favorably. I went long on the 24th after hours, 95.60, moved up from there, didn't take profit at this 98, 80, 70 level um, initially, and thankfully I got another chance to do so after it touched some of the lows and bounced up off higher. Uh, so I took profit last week at 98.80 for 3.20 a share. And then it held up the 98.70 level this week. And that looks to be a support now as the stock hopefully continues higher to my price target of 102 and 105. So everything looks good there. PayPal was trying to play this off of that psychological $100 level. It was a technical uh, rebound that I was looking to play once the RSI dropped below 30 and below 20 here. So after initial negativity, the stock moved up and I was able to take profit on the 18th at 115 for 14.74 per share. And it's kind of been holding around that level and it was weaker on Friday. So it's right in between about 115, 116, and 113 or so. So hopefully it can hold up this level and move higher. But if not, I did move up my stop loss to 106 to preserve the gains on this trade. So compared to Pfizer, a little less confident on its ability to get to that next price target. Um, Fiserv, I'm pretty confident based on what's going on technically that it will reach those higher price targets. PayPal, I'm a little more reserved on based on its behavior uh, around these levels. And then AMD was another long that I took as the market rebounded. I thought it was at a favorable technical level. Moved up pretty quickly, took profit the day after entry for a gain of 638 per share at 111.50. It's pretty much moved higher ever since then. Really strong Thursday, touching 120, moving above it a little bit, and then cooled off a tiny bit on Friday. But it looks to be headed to that 123 level for my final price target on AMD. And then I'm just mentioning this one just so you can learn from what happened here. But I went long on Archer Daniels Midland. This is a US based. Uh, farming company. It is a value name. It's a strong dividend payer. So I longed the breakout of that recent high around 88.10. Got my entry at 88.20 on the 23rd. The reason for this was I wanted to be long U.S. agriculture as the price for corn and wheat and grain and other crops continued to move higher with the war in Ukraine. Both Russia and Ukraine are exporters of agricultural products for the US. 
we're going to be more reliant on U.S. based crops. And that was why I wanted to take this as a long and it looks to be continuing to break out. So I'll wait for a reversal or for something to change before exiting this one. This looks like one of those runners that you just let run. I don't think I'll bring it up again on the video, but I just wanted you to see how you could take advantage of a breakout above a recent high based on a macro event, in this case, bullishness on US-based agriculture. All right, so that is it for this week. I hope you have a good week of trading. Thank you for supporting the video. Last video got over 100 views, which was a new record for me. So thank you for supporting, it does mean a lot. If you enjoyed the video or learned something from it, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and maybe even share the video with your friends or neighbors who are interested in stock trading. All right, so long everybody.